know this morning you're going to hear from one of the experts in the industry. Ah, yes, Dr. Story. Um, on how to do a really bang up presentation to first the judges and then to your project clients. Um, I really want you to listen and, and do this. A good plan can be uh, helped or hurt by a poor presentation. Congratulations on getting your documents in on time, that is a fantastic achievement. No penalty points! Sounds good to me. And as you've heard, now it's crunch time. Because the best plan can be overtaken by the second best plan if the presentation of the plan is superior. And there are so many points at play for you that what we're going to do this morning with our presentation skills will make a big difference in the final results. What you have in front of you is a, a manual, which is actually a manual for a full day of training on successful public speaking. And obviously, in the time we have available to us, we won't be going through the whole manual. I'll pull little pieces out of it. And we're going to have lots of opportunity for actual practice. So I'm going to talk today about giving presentations so that in your business career, as you are called upon to represent your organization or represent yourself, you'll be able to do it in a professional manner. The most immediate application of the training will be for the judging panel, for the JMEC oral presentations. And I'll talk about that in some detail as well, about how uh, some things you can think about for that. So let us begin, and we will uh, look at some of the problems that come up in the research around presentation skills. Now, this is a very interesting diagram. When they looked at uh, presentations, the vast majority of presentations that people listening to in business are thought to be boring, and the ones that aren't boring just make you plain sleepy, and only 3% of business presentations were considered to be stimulating or interesting. What that says is that you, very simply, can place yourself in the top 3% because the competition is so weak and so impotent, basically. So it is worthwhile to think about that because you represent your organization in the first instance, but you also represent brand you. We make assumptions about your organization based on meeting you and how you come across. Now, it could be an internal meeting. It could be a broader meeting. It could be a very large gathering. The presentation skills don't change that much in terms of what you need to know. So what we're going to look at today is how to be a person in the 3% group rather than in the boring and sleepy group. So can we uh, deal with confidence? We're going to talk about fear of presenting in a moment and structure and purpose of the presentation. Your opening and closing are very, very critical. We'll talk about why that is. First impression, last impression, how that works. And then evidence. What you say may or may not be true to the listener unless you have solid evidence to back it up. So this is the agenda for today, the things we'll go through. And again, this is a whole day of training with lots and lots of role play and practice normally in a full day. We'll have a truncated version of that for you today. Still have some practice. Before we begin, though, in your, at your tables, and if there's anyone who's got a personality defect and they're sitting by themselves, um, <laughs> maybe think about, yes, getting someone, yes, you're not alone, there's two of you, don't worry. You can perhaps form a pair. And uh, in pairs, discuss yourselves. Think about outstanding presenters. Think about people you respect, people you've seen, you think, wow, that was a great presentation. What was the outstanding feature of that presentation? So take some moments, I'll give you a couple of minutes, just to discuss your details. What are some qualities that you recognize yourself in outstanding presenters. Please go ahead, take a couple of minutes, discuss that the tables, and we'll get some feedback. Pull it up there, and let's get some feedback. George, maybe you can start off and give us some qualities of outstanding presenters and presentations that you've seen, please. Um, I guess interactivity. 
interactivity. Uh -huh. um, not just speaking to the audience, but engaging them at some level, whether it be through, you know, um, I don't know dialogue or activity or something. Okay, so the speaker is not separated from the audience. There's some interactivity with the audience, so they engage with the audience. Good point. There's another point at your table. What else came up? This table here, everyone's very quiet up the front here. Never sit at the front, okay? This is the first line of presentation skills. <laughs> Never sit up the front. So what did you guys come up with? Impact first impression, yes. Yes, eye contact with the presenter and the audience. Yes, eye contact with the audience. Yes, we'll talk a little bit about that too. How about over here, you guys, what did you come up with? Passion. Sorry? Passion. Passion. Okay, so some sense of energy. As trainers, we operate at about probably 120, 130% energy levels. We do that because we take the audience of participants from around about 60% energy level, driving them up to 80 or 90%. It's the same with an audience. Audiences can leave you very quickly. You have to have a lot more energy than you would in a normal conversational tone. When you're just chatting with each other, that's a certain level. But if you're going to be a presenter, you've got to take it right up and get that audience involved. Okay, how about, uh, how about this second row here? You never sit in the second row either, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Clarity. Clarity, yes. So it's clear to understand what the points are that are being made. Yeah, like it should have a, a, a structure. Okay, should have a structure that the audience can follow, yeah? Yes. Okay, how about over here, ladies? Um, confidence? Confidence, how can you tell they're confident? Uh, the way they uh, appear or um, present themselves. Yes. Body language, voice tone, probably show a lot about the confidence. Any other points that you've thought about in your tables that haven't come up yet? Yes, please. Here we had uh, voice modulation. Voice modulation. So what about Japanese, though? What about when you speak in Japanese? That flat tone, right? There's a problem. If you're a Japanese speaker and your language is flat, it's a monotone, isn't it? And if you're a foreigner and you're learning Japanese here, what has happened? Your sensei says, no, 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 Greg, not that up and down. Flat, flat, flat. Okay, which is the death knell of speakers. <laughs> so the Japanese in the audience, you have to think about how you can have variety in your voice that won't put your audience to sleep. And I'll hold that thought for a little bit later. <coughs> one more. <coughs> you go, no, oh, great, you're on fire, go. So no technical words, clear message, no jargon probably. I think most of us operate in companies where you can have an entire sentence composed of acronyms which are entirely intelligible to the people in the company. Right? But for anybody outside, it's just, what the hell are they talking about? So we've got to be careful about our audience consideration. I'll take one more. Surprise? Surprise. How would you mean about surprise? Something uh, unexpected, something... Uh... Obvious. Okay. <laughs> Grab the attention of the audience. When you came in this morning, first of all, you were stressed because you couldn't find this building. Yeah. <laughs> and then you were stressed because you couldn't get in the building. Okay. And so you've got one in your lives, and so does your audience. They're, they're, they're at work, if it's an internal meeting. They have got a lot happening. You have to break in. You've got to get inside their head with your message. And sometimes something that's a little bit surprising captures our attention, grabs our attention, and allows you to then bring in the message. So remember, your audience's heads are already bursting. They're full. How can we get inside and get our message across? So that's a very good point. And in fact, in your manuals, if you have a look on page, I think it's page 1.3, there are some qualities of outstanding presenters which many of you have already, have already mentioned which is great, we picked off most of those up. Now, one of, the, one of the problems now, I'm going to use accountants as an example because I love using accountants as an example. Uh, knowledge is thought to be very, very critical. I have got a lot of technical knowledge. I am an expert. I know what I'm talking about. That should be enough. That should be, I don't need this, you know, presentation stuff. No! That's fluff. People want the meat. They want the quality of my knowledge and the depth of my information. 
Now, interestingly enough, that's not the case. A lot of people think it is the case. So they don't put any effort into being a conveyor of that knowledge, of being someone who's an exponent of their expertise in a way that really captures the attention of an audience. So in this triangle, skill and attitude are basically 80% of what you need to be successful. Skill of delivery, skill of persuasion, skill of structure of a presentation, the delivery of the presentation. Attitude comes back to that passion that you talked about a minute ago. Wanting to be persuasive, wanting to be memorable, wanting to represent your organization as someone who's standing out amongst the crowd. And part of that 3% that we mentioned before. So don't get trapped into the idea that, oh, because I'm an expert in my field, that's enough. And a lot of people make that mistake, and they use it as an excuse not to develop their skill. And they've got basically the wrong attitude. They're not seeing they are the face of the company. If you are up here representing your company and you are boring, you are unprofessional, you are flat, you are dull, you are unclear, we judge your entire organization to be just like that. Because we make assumptions about the whole organization based on our exposure to you. So it's not just your personal brand that's being killed, your company organizational brand is being killed as well. So don't get tied into, oh, I have knowledge, so therefore that's enough. It is not enough. Now, uh, there's a, a very famous study done by uh, uh, Professor Moravian, and he looked at what happens when the communication delivery and the communication message don't match up? What we call incongruent. They don't match up. Now, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example of that. Good morning. It's wonderful to be here. My name is Dr. Greg Story. I'm the president of Dale Hill to Train Japan. We are the world leaders in teaching presentation skills. <laughs> How do I go? What did I say? I said good morning. My name is Dr. Greg Story. I am the president of Dale Kennedy Train in Japan. We are the world leaders in teaching presentation skills. Those were my words. But how many of you heard my words? Probably no one. Almost no one. So what he found was that only 7% of our words are picked up when the delivery mechanism doesn't match the message. So if I write on the whiteboard, if we had a whiteboard here, which we don't, if I write on the whiteboard what I just said, and you read that, you'd go, oh, okay, right, I've got that. But you would not get it from the way I delivered it. Because I had no energy, I had no eye contact, I had no voice, I had no passion. And so you read my body language more than you read, or listen, I should say, to my words. You read and listened to my tone of voice more than what you heard I was saying. So the danger is that when we're presenting something, if we're very flat and dull and weak in energy, people don't hear the message at all. And now if you Tee this slide up at the last slide, and you're a, a high-flying accountant with lots of great knowledge, and you are a very dull individual in terms of your presentation skills, or an engineer, or you're anything in any, any profession, people don't get the message. They buy what they see and the tone of how it's delivered. So we need to really pep it up when we're talking in front of groups, even of a small group, if we're going to get the message through. And this is research done a long time ago, which is very consistent. So when incongruent, then we go for everything else but the message. So we've got to be very careful about that. So in terms of preparation, uh, we're going to look at a little bit about fear and how to minimize that. And there's a famous joke about, you know, it's not even a joke, but in some cases when you surveys, that you know, people are giving selection, things they can make choices about, things they fear, and often uh, death comes in behind public speaking, how that works, I don't know. But people fear public speaking more than they feel dying. So, uh, you know, Jerry Seinfeld has a, a famous one-liner where he talks about, uh, because of this, most people are more worried about uh, giving the eulogy than being in the casket and being dead. So we'll talk about that. 
And understanding your audience and trying to build rapport with that, and some of you said that earlier, having a good first impression, you have strength. So we don't teach Shakespearean oratory at Dale Carnegie. Okay? We ask you to be yourself, but to be a professional you, not to be someone you are not. Ladies and gentlemen, today we are presenting presentation skills. Let me tell you my struggle. <laughs> you know? We're not teaching that. We want you to be you. We want you to be a professional you. So don't try and be Barack Obama or Steve Jobs or whoever you might think is a great presenter. Be the better you. And communicate with confidence and confidence, of course. And then finally, help the audience to relax. So these are things we're going to cover in the initial part. Now, the fear factor, you know, we, we shouldn't worry about <coughs> fear of speaking. It's a natural human instinct. And it generally derives from the fact that people are unskilled. Now, adrenaline, we know, gives us a couple of things we can tap into. We can fight or we can flight, right? It's a classic, fight or flight. When you're presenting, you can't fly necessarily. So you're stuck here, so you've got to fight. But for some people, that's a very tricky thing to do. Now, you can have a look at it. Michael Bay is the director who did Transformer series of movies. If you've not seen it on YouTube, it is horrific, absolutely horrific. He's in Las Vegas, he's at the Samsung event. He's coming on stage, he's going to give a presentation, his teleprompter goes down, goes down. And he starts, he gets about 10 seconds into it, and he's got no teleprompter and he's got no backup. And he just gives up. And he literally walks off the stage with his head down, his tail between his legs, destroyed his personal brand, destroyed the event, and disappeared. Because he didn't have a backup plan, he didn't know what to do without a teleprompter. Okay? So you can see yourself destroyed very easily if you don't know what you're doing. And there was the fear factor, I think, for him. He didn't know where, why, well, teleprompter's broken, what do I do? Oh, my God, I'm out of here. He escaped. He fleed. <laughs> he fleed, actually, in that case. All right, so uh, it does give you energy, though, to have that passion, because the adrenaline's pumping. It's good. And if you're, uh, you know, rather a mild-mannered person, a bit sort of, you know, could be, tending to be a bit flat, that helps get the energy going. You get a bit of lift in the voice, a bit of body, body uh, language going on there. Um, shows you're committed, you care about the outcome. So, with, uh, with fear, uh, it's usually things we're, we're worried about. I think in your manuals, I'm just having a quick look here. Let me cover this on, uh, let's see, um, page 1.5. Uh, you'll see a whole bunch of things there on how to, um, how to minimize fear. Okay, I'll just pick up a couple of those. And so one of them is obviously know your audience, do your homework, be prepared. That's an obvious thing. Yeah? The funny thing we talk about being prepared. Most people think preparation is doing the PowerPoint. So you'll find that the majority of presenters are going to spend 99% of their time on the PowerPoint or getting the materials together. And they spend maybe 1% or less on practicing delivering it. So the balance is totally crazy. A totally crazy imbalance. So that just running through the flow of what you're going to say before you deliver it to an audience helps you a lot to realize whether you need to put in some high energy parts, some low energy parts, and speed in, speed out. But people don't do that. They don't take the time. Practice, even if it's on your own. And if you can, if you've got a mirror, do it in front of a mirror. If you're traveling, it often happens to me, I'm traveling, I'm going to be presenting keynote speaker, I'm in a hotel. The night before, you know, the hotel windows can become like a mirror, actually. And I use that, and I'm, I'm gesturing and I'm speaking to people who don't exist, imagining I've got an audience in front of me to get myself in the flow of how I'm going to present the next day. Practice, 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 and keep practicing. So that's a very, very critical thing. But most people don't bother to do that. Um, don't memorize it. Know it so well that you can give it. Now, here's something. Uh, people fear mistakes. Now, only Michael Bay, in that example of the Samsung event in Las Vegas, knew what he was going to say. 
He was the only person, perhaps, in the room, except for his co-host, who did a lousy job of saving the day, by the way, I've got to tell you. Really left Michael Bay at the hand, I think. Uh, but he's the only guy in the whole room who knew what Michael Bay was going to say. So if the teleprompter goes down and Michael Bay talks about something off script, only Michael Bay and the other guy know that. No one else would have had a clue. Same thing for you. If something happens, remember, only you know where this is going. Your audience hasn't got a clue. They haven't been told yet. So it's not quite going in the order that you anticipated it should go. Guess what? Only you know that. Oh no! I don't know the order! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! If I got the second section before the first section, oh, what did I do? Don't tell the audience that, right? <laughs> Keep it a big secret. Don't show you made a mistake. Oh, oh. Don't show a thing. Poker face. You know, like, the show must go on. Who would know that the order got mixed up? In most cases, your audience won't have a clue. They will not be that able to tell. So don't be fearful of making a mistake because only you know it was a mistake. And this thing is from here. Um, yeah, Ryan Gray is a good one. You know, I'm presenting, so I'm here. I think I was here with my friend I met in the elevator hall. He's here somewhere. The two of us arrived at the same time. Uh, get early, uh, set up early, make sure it's all working, because there's nothing more pleasurable for a presenter than to see a PowerPoint on the screen, trust me, if you're going to use PowerPoint. But even if it doesn't come up, it doesn't matter. The show goes on anyway. And a lot of audiences are very happy not to have any PowerPoint, frankly. They're PowerPointed to death. Uh, so that's fine. But get here, make sure the equipment's working, and try and meet some of the people. I had the opportunity, if you remember, at our first event when I spoke about business planning, that I went out in the audience and I, I talked to quite a few of you and I met you and I chatted. That was for me to get a tone for the audience and get a pulse of the day and just find out a little bit about some people, look for the French people in the audience, you know, so I can talk about them in business planning, was it for that opportunity? Hmm. Um, so, you know, those sorts of things. And so it's a good chance for you to do that early. And then you feel a bit more connected with the audience. You know, for example, with George. Now, I started my presentation by asking George to make a comment. Now, I know George because I see George all the time at his workplace. And so, uh, you know, I can, I can bring George into the conversation. So now I'm connecting with a member of the audience. So I feel I'm much closer to the audience. And the audience feels I'm much closer to them because I've got one of them into the conversation with me. So this is a good thing if you're actually starting a presentation. You know, you might say, well, look, I was talking to Jim just before we started, and he made a very good point. Or Mary raised an issue with me before I started, which I want to talk about. Thank you for that, Mary. So now Mary's there. Well, yes, I'm very important. And Jim's, I'm very important. So you've got the audience connected with you. And this will help to allay your fears of being, I'm up here and you are out there, which tends to happen a little bit. And then uh, butterflies, and uh, give yourself a pet talk on the bottom there. Sometimes it's hard to stop your, your physical manifestations of fear. Now we have a, a, a beautiful prop here, which I'm going to grab. Imagine, oops, imagine um, I'm, at a, I'm at an event and there's a speaker. He's got one of these. It's on, a, it's on a, a platform just like that. Now he's representing his company. It was actually one of the Japanese uh, ministries. It was, a, uh, it was an IT industry sector New Year's party, and he's representing his boss, okay, and he's giving this presentation that the boss would give, and he is, he is suffering. He is suffering. How do I know he's suffering? Well, he made a basic mistake, and I see some of you, you know, gentlemen here, and, and some of the ladies wearing coloured blouses or tops. Uh, if you're a presenter, never wear anything but white, because if you perspire, and this room is getting hot, if I'm operating at 120%, I will heat up. Uh, you will start to perspire. And your lovely blue shirt there is now going to be a two-tone, dark blue and light blue combination. And the audience is going to be going, oh, look at that. Dark blue, light blue combination. And they're going to not take any notice of your message. Now, this gentleman, he actually, unfortunately, is wearing a blue shirt, which has become two-tone. And just to add a little bit more excitement to it, uh, he was sweating perspiring, and was sort of coming down the sides of his face here, was pulling at the chin, and then he was going, <laughs> right through the whole presentation. Now that guy was in severe pain. He was under a lot of pressure. 
and he showed it. So sometimes, you know, you can't help it. Yes, you might perspire. Yes, try not to drip onto the mic, though. Maybe stand back a bit, let it go on the floor or something. Um, get a handkerchief, maybe. But uh, breathing is something that we confuse. Now, Asian cultures generally have a better sense of diaphragm breathing than Western culture, because uh, you'll see, uh, and there's a, a, a classic example, there's a beautiful American woman, blonde, blue eyes, curvaceous, she's a stunner, speaks awesome Japanese, perfect. She married into a Japanese family that are in the sake business, and she's become involved in that, and she often gives presentations, and I attend one of these, and she's gorgeous, you know, the whole package, right? you can't believe it. And yet, she had this very, uh, very big issue with breathing, in the sense of she was taking very shallow breaths from the top of her lungs, so it would be like this. I'm very pleased to be here. <gasps> Today is a very important day for my company. <gasps> like this. So she's taking these, these little shallow breaths all through the presentation, which becomes incredibly annoying. She hadn't learned to breathe from the diaphragm. And so I'm going to ask you to stand up now. Please, everyone, stand up. Now, ladies, this is going to be a bit embarrassing. I'm sorry. Okay? You're going to have to let your tummies go out. Okay? We're all trained to keep them in. But just place your hand, one hand on your, on your tummy. What I want us all to do is, as we take a breath in, try to take the breath from down here, not from the top of the lungs, such that the, the stomach actually goes out. You're actually pushing it out like that. Got the idea? So if it's going like that, wrong way. You want it to go this way. Okay, got the idea? So deep breath, very slow deep breath. Ready, go, breathe. And out. Okay, try again, try and push that hand out. One more. Okay, sit down again. That's a very simple demonstration of diaphragm breathing where you're trying to actually get the, the stomach area to expand because you're bringing the air from deep in the lung rather than breathing that very shallow breath that I talked that this young lady was doing, which actually then had an impact on how she's speaking. And that tends to give you a lot more oxygen to the brain, makes it a bit clearer, and tends to calm you down a bit. So if you are a bit nervous, just take a moment, slow your breathing down a little bit, use a bit of a bit diaphragm breathing, and then give yourself a bit of a pep talk. I am a person who knows what they're talking about. I know my subject. I know what I'm going to speak about. I should have no fear about my audience. I'm going to engage with my audience. So get yourself in a very positive mode around the things that you can do. Okay, so let's have a look here. We've gone through those. So the key point here in the middle, you see, is preparation. And uh, who's the audience? Who am I speaking with? Um, what's the, the purpose? And we'll talk about that in a minute, because not every presentation has the same purpose, right? Some of them have different. How are we going to open this person? Uh, what is the, the content with evidence? Okay. And then practice, practice, practice. And it may be difficult to practice with other people, but if you can, that's great. They can give you feedback. Now, um, don't ever ask for feedback unless you specify how you want that feedback. You say, well, please give me some feedback. Every single person, unless instructed, will usually go into critic mode. Let me tell you what's wrong with you. And <laughs> proceed to tell you. And your confidence goes kaplunk, like that. Ask them, please give me feedback. Tell me, what am I doing that is good, that's working for me? I may not be aware of it. You tell me what you think is working for me. And then please tell me, because I'm going to do this again in a moment, how I can do it better. So the whole feedback process, you control it and put on the front foot, not the back foot. And you'll be more open to receive the feedback, you'll be happier about it, you'll be calmer about receiving it, and it's very, very positive. So set that up when you are getting, when you are getting feedback. Okay. So, uh, who is the audience? In the next case, for you, the audience will be the judges. They've read through the business plans, all of them. Okay, so they're very knowledgeable. They've been judges before. They've done this a very long time. Okay. Um, what's the purpose? The purpose of your presentation is to win the competition by showing the most professionalism and being the most persuasive and able to take a very long piece of work, compress it down to a very uh, small period of time and get the highlights. Don't worry about anything but the gems. 
look for the gems, look for the diamonds, and just hit them with that, because that's the, the key thing that's going to be the most impressive. How do I open? How do I break through all that clutter that's in the mind of my audience? What will I be able to say? Now, particularly, you've got to have you know, half-hour blocks, bang, 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 through a whole couple of days of presentations. You can imagine, you're the last team on the day, right? You're the last team. Well, you're the team after lunch. Now, if you get the draw, and you get the after lunch, and say, redraw, redraw, I want the redraw. Don't take the one after lunch. That's a, that's a tough one. You've got to be really on fire with the open if you're doing the after lunch one, or you're doing the last one on the day, okay? You better be on fire for that one. And then, what are the key points I'm going to make? So, what are the gems? What are the absolute gems that we found, the real insights, the real value pieces that we're going to add to the client? What are they? And then, what's the evidence? You've got to have evidence, proof, back it up, point, proof, point, proof, point, proof, like that. Get through then. Last impression. How can I finish this off so that judges are going to remember our presentation? That's what we're looking for. Now, this particular case, your audience is uh, very specific, they're judges, so they've been doing this a long time. But think about a business audience. What degree of knowledge do they have? Are they all experts? Are uh, some of them experts? Are uh, some of them amateurs? You've got to, to judge according to the audience. It might be a mixed group. How, what level do you need to hit it at? If you go too complex, you lose your audience. If you go too simple, your audience gets bored. It means something in the middle. What's their degree of expertise? What's their degree of experience about this subject? And then bias. Do they have a bias? Do they have a doubt? Do they have a doubt about something you're going to say? You might have made some claims, perhaps in your paper, that the uh, judges might think, well, that sounds like a bunch of crap to me. That doesn't gel with my experience. So you might have some points you know uh, are going to get some pushback from the judges. So you better be prepared for the pushback and expect that uh, in your audience, uh, you will have that. You'll have some people who will ask, Nasty questions.